Hello and welcome my friend, it's great to have you here. My name is Timo and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how I made an AI SaaS that made me over $73,000 so you can just go ahead and copy me. This is one of my AI SaaS, I have now multiple, but um, I did a, a recent video about this process and it got uh, very good feedback from uh, from people on YouTube. For example, like this comment, this is the type of video I'd expect to see in a 100 to $500 or even more startup course. And obviously I'm giving this all away completely for free here on YouTube. My intention is to, to help you, to help more people here. And this time I've also included some free resources for you guys that you can check out in uh, the description below. An AI coding prompt sheet uh, that I use um, with copy paste cursor rules that are very, very important uh, to set up cursor projects without getting spaghetti code. Um, so check that out below, completely free sheet. And also my how to market your SaaS on TikTok sheet that go got me over 400,000 users for this exact SaaS. And I've also updated the building part in today's video, um, how I would go ahead and build this nowadays um, with the tools we have nowadays, right? And let me just quickly jump into one of the Stripe accounts and refresh here just to give some transparency, right? I know um, I have done this many times before, but just to show you guys, okay, I have actually had some of the results that I'm showing here, um, unless uh, some, some other people maybe <laughs> on the internet, right? And I also have other SaaS, I'm not going into that too much, but this is uh, on the B2B side, um, exactly. Here's some more uh, proof, basically. All right, how? How do you start, right? How do you start if you want to rebuild a SaaS like this? You start from the problem, okay? That may surprise you um, because we have now a lot of solutions out there, right? AI is a kind of a solution, but we still have to start from the problem, okay? Because in the end, people pay with the wallet for a problem that you solve for them, right? And like a beginner mistake is to find um, solutions uh, to, to find uh, app ideas that are not really problems. For example, make me an app that connects my friends to me better. Um, that problem doesn't really exist. It uh, already got solved by so many apps. That's why if you launch a social app, it's it's very, very hard to, to get traction with that, right? Um, I can definitely recommend you to make a list um, with three columns. That is ideation, validation, and doing now. Um, and also in my AI SaaS uh, blueprint, I'm giving you exactly my sheet that I use for my validation that saved me like probably probably months of building because um, I have very, very specific criteria in there that help me um, filter out ideas that are really just not good, right? Um, and I have a lot of filters in there and usually only if all of my filters say yes, then I'm going for the idea, right? So um, that can save you a lot of time because ideas are kind of abundant nowadays um, and there's a lot of bad ideas out there, bad advice that just sound cool, but um, just not worth it to do it, right? Now, how do you find problems to solve? Honestly, the best ideas probably come from your own own day-to-day -day life because you're your own best customers. You know what bothers you. You know what could be improved in your life, right? And if you have that problem, it is very likely that other people have that problem as well, right? Um, also, if you're in a job, this is actually, this is actually a pro. Uh, yeah, this is, this is great because, uh, you are ahead of people who are not in a job. Obviously you make money, right? But also you are exposed to B2B problems and B2B, pro B2B problems pay really, really nice money, right? Um, so if you find a problem, a task that you do over and over again in your day-to-day -day life that could be automated, that is a good B2B software idea that you could start and then not only automate your own job, but sell that to other companies in uh, your space, right? Also, very important, to get big, you have to start small, right? The riches are in the niches. There is actually um, a great um, a great picture from Alex Ramosi. I unfortunately forgot to put it in, in here right now, but let me explain it from my head. Um, if you make something more niche, you can basically charge way more for it than if you make it general, right? I have this in my SaaS blueprint, um, that picture. But yeah, the more niche you go, the more are willing uh, people are willing to pay for, even if it's the same product, right? Um, like a lot more. 
a lot more, right? Um, also, this very very important, right? You want to go recurring, right? This is why you're just why you're here, right? This is why you want to build SaaS. Um, recurring just gets you way easier to your a million a million dollars a year or whatever your goal is. Um, instead of making uh, one time payments uh, for for stuff, right? Even if you have no cost, right? You never price based on your cost. You always price based uh, on the value you provide and if that value is monthly then you charge them monthly right and let's say you build a b2b SaaS at 1k a month uh, you only need 83 customers to have a million a year that's it's quite doable it's actually quite doable um, also no ideas are original uh, i love this book steal like an artist um, it basically says read it read it it's just uh, a few pages very very fast um, a lot of pictures in there um, the books that I like um, it basically teaches you how no ideas are original ever um, not even from the greatest people like Picasso or whatever and it's it's no problem um, that's just the nature of ideas uh, you take from other people what they did well and you build on top of that but of course if you like steal like a lot you're going to mention them or whatever um but this is just how the world works right um, often the second movers or the third movers do way better than the first mover because they can just take the idea and iterate on it right do what has been proven to work okay um yes i know you may think the next apple would be cool or the next facebook but it's it's really hard to build that first one um in something just uh, do something that has been proven to work. I have a great, great case study of that um, in the SaaS blueprint as well. Um, man, there's no such. Just let me let me tell you, there's no such thing as saturation um, in a growing market. Okay, if you have a growing market uh, plus um, a validated idea, that is basically ASAP revenue. Um, that is the fastest way to make money. And you don't have to be afraid of, of competition in a growing market, right? Just make sure the market is growing and it's not dying, okay? Um, and yeah, you want to succeed like a 999 times of a thousand times because you don't have that many shots, right? Yes, you can make a lot of quick landing pages nowadays uh, with AI, but still after that you have to work on a product, you have to talk to customers and stuff like this. You cannot run unlimited businesses um, and have time to experiment unlimited times. You want to make money quickly, right? That's why it's important to validate your idea. And I just put that picture of the Samvor brothers in here. I'm German um, and these guys are very famous in Germany for copying other businesses. That was their, their business strategy. Um, now what they did famously was they copied eBay, uh, called it Alando in Germany. And 100 days, imagine this. A hundred days after they copied that company, they sold it back to eBay for forty-three million dollars. Um, yeah, they are they are hated in uh, Silicon Valley these brothers, but um, yeah, this is this is their business model what they do and it it works brilliantly. Not saying you should copy one-on-one -on -one, uh, companies, but this is one of the ways to find great ideas is to go to the United States, for example, where ideas usually arise and take some of what they do and just open that in a different country. There's no shame about that. Um, the world is big enough for everybody. That is a great way, actually, to find a validated idea. Now, how do you validate <coughs> um, your idea? You basically, three steps, you build a landing page. I love Webflow. Um, it's just proven to work. They have template libraries, like thousands of pages of, of libraries, of templates you can ASAP clone and they look really good. And also I found Webflow pages rank really well on Google. Um, I did a lot of landing pages as well with Lovable and the ones on Webflow rank better on Google. Not sure if I did something wrong in Lovable, but Webflow just worked, for example, for a landing page, right? Important is you find your H1 keyword, um, you find that keyword that people search for the most, but that still has low uh, keyword difficulty. I would aim for a keyword difficulty below 10. Um, like that, you can put your H1 keyword into your heading and you pretty much immediately start ranking on Google once you submit to Search Console and you get free traffic. Um, and then I would just create 
a waitlist behind that button. So you make it look like the product is live and stuff that people click on the button and then you actually have a, have a waitlist, right? Because you are still uh, collecting um, waitlist emails and you're still collecting uh, validation basically before you start building. I'm always aiming for at least like 100 emails on my waitlist before I even start building anything. Um, just, yeah, to, to have the validation. What you can also do is create 10 TikToks um, for your product. I have the TikTok sheet right in the, uh, in the bio below that teaches you how to make these. Uh, with TikToks, I mean any kind of short form content, right? There can be also reels, that can be uh, shorts, of course. Um, just make these, post them across all social media and see if some pop and uh, put your link in bio and see if people are interested in your idea and sign up for your waitlist, right? <clears throat> pro, pro tip is having a payment link on there. Um, if people pay already, a friend of mine did that. That was that was really brilliant. He had a um, a payment intent link actually. So he uh, he put up like a fake uh, payment mask and then uh, let people like submit. And it's like, oh, this is just uh, don't worry. This is just a fake payment. Just seeing if you uh, are willing to pay, basically. Honestly, I would just do the real payment link um, and collect the cash, and then you immediately can tell the people, hey, product uh, is being built. You are the first that will receive the product and you will also have X, Y, and Z benefits because you already paid, uh, because you are uh, paying before the product is out, right? Number three, building with AI, right? Uh, this now changed from uh, my last video, which, uh, I mean, these AI coding tools became just so good, right? Um, now, still important is to build fast and minimal to ship fast and to don't really care about like is the code like beautiful or whatever the only thing i would now care about is can ai read it right can ai read your code well that is really important um and i have also some tips and tricks on how um, you make your code ai readable um, I mean, look at Peter Levels, right? Uh, one of the OG indie hackers who makes over 400K a month, $400,000 as a one-man show. Uh, uses an old language, uses like one file for all his code, ships straight into production. Um, this is also uh, one thing I, I would usually recommend because it just saves you a lot of time. And yeah, nowadays he lets AI write most of his code for him and then he focuses on distribution right this is this is his secret why he is successful um, it's not that he has the best ideas the most beautiful code it's because he has distribution now the old way would be to build some kind of no code thing um, with like platforms like Zapier Typeform Web Webflow I would still recommend to use for for landing pages or like go high levels like a marketing platform if you want to build an MVP, but to be honest, um, this is really like, you don't need this anymore. Uh, you can build everything now with Lovable or a plus cursor. This is my recommended stack. Um, this is my hybrid approach. Um, Lovable is great for a quick front end uh, plus authentication, plus connecting your database. I would do that in Lovable. And then once you have some more let's say deeper um requirements for the back end right you're building your actual app i would move to cursor because you just have like a bit more control there um over what is going on and then you can also deploy it on your favorite uh deployment uh, server right if that's uh, vercel or whatever right you don't have to host it on lovable it's very easy to get it away from lovable you just have to connect your github um exactly but um, yeah, before you even start in any of these code editors, it's very important to uh, have rules um, and to have a, a really optimized prompt so that the AI knows exactly what you want, right? The AI, the AI is great, but the AI output is only as good as your prompt is, as your input, right? Input equals output. So make sure you have rules um, and a really optimized prompt, right? Um, yeah. Your enemy is perfection. Um, yeah, actually, for, for the prompting, I would say the perfection is actually important. Um, this is something I would change from last time for AI coding. Aim for a really good, really good prompt. 
um, let's say not for AI coding, <laughs> um, but you still don't need VC money. So I have just been to San Francisco actually for the last uh, two weeks and it is crazy how many people move from VC money to uh, solo or indie. Um, I was at a talk with uh, Greg Eisenberg, maybe you know Greg Eisenberg, and he did a um, he did a poll how many people uh, would look for VC funding in there. And San Francisco is the capital of like venture capital and stuff like that, right? So um, he said when he was there four years ago or two years ago, 99% said, yes, we're going to raise. And now it was only about like 50% of people uh, um, put their hand up when, when he asked, do you want to raise funds? So dramatically decreased that dramatically de decrease and it's great um it's just uh being democracy uh, yeah more people can do what usually had to be done with vc right like hiring a big team of uh dep um, developers and stuff like that right step four launching um there is a bunch of ways for free marketing so many ways for free marketing one is a launch platform like product hunt right will give you around a thousand to potentially 10,000 page views depending on your um, idea but also very very much depending on do you have an audience already I see the most the people who do the best on product hunt have a large audience somewhere else for example on Twitter um, so that brings me to the second point that is building in public always a great idea build your ex profile just um, don't sell the people in your post just say hey I ship this hey I ship that hey I ship that making it making them feel like they're just part of the journey never sell them like people se uh, smell from like miles away if you want to sell them something in your post so um yeah just share what you do seo many say seo is dead seo definitely still works and also uh, just a hint for you all the like ChatGPT search and stuff right they still use search engines to get their search results so uh, SEO, as I described before, with your H1, optimize your page, definitely works. Uh, get f free traffic, right? Just completely free traffic. Um, yeah, op start optimizing for AI search engines as well. Uh, B2B, you can do cold emails. Um, to be honest, I found the inbound traffic way better because it's like way hotter when people find you on uh, SEO. Or what I do a lot, what I haven't mentioned here, is uh, YouTube long form. That's also a type of SEO. YouTube long form videos are amazing uh, for finding uh, customers, especially in B2B. Let me put that here, B2B. Uh, why? Because people search uh, for specific solutions. Sorry about my typing here. Searching, they're searching for specific solutions. Then they watch a video from you for like 10 minutes. These people are so hot. Um, they're like, okay, I trust this guy. Uh, let me, uh, let me buy his product or let me schedule a call. Right. With cold emails, they read your email for like three seconds. They're like, oh, this is spam. Um, inbound is just content is just king. Uh, and SEO is a form of content as well. Uh, lastly, short form content, of course, that's like a free lottery. Um, it's not as high intent as YouTube long form, um, because people only see your video for a few seconds. So they don't, they cannot build as much trust with you. But it's still, I mean, it can get crazy results, as you can see here. Um, if you have a viral product uh, with virality, um, like a B2C one, for example, you see I got like 1.7 million views for uh, for one of the Ginny, Ginny's video. And this got pff, so many, uh, so many users to the page. Um, it, it even crashed uh, like multiple times the whole software. Uh, we had to rewrite the whole code because we used like expensive third-party software in the beginning like Twilio to connect to WhatsApp it was a whole mess I mean but yeah a lot of free traffic and tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of users yeah great um, I hope you enjoyed the last 20 minutes of this video if you want to dive deeper get these get these free uh, sheets in the bio or check out the full SaaS blueprint and uh, yeah I hope to see more more comments like this and yeah see you in the next video